It's Monday, June 19th, 2023. Let's talk about the news. From Bleeping Computer, millions of Oregon and Louisiana state IDs stolen in Move It Breach. Millions of state drivers' licenses and personal data connected to them have been exposed in a data breach, according to the governments of Louisiana and Oregon. A Russia-linked ransomware group called CLOP is reportedly responsible for this and a slew of other breaches that have made use of the same vulnerability in a piece of file transfer software called MoveIt, which has allowed the group to hack financial services organization First National Bankers Bank, energy giant Shell, a nonprofit benefits carrier called Green Shield Canada, the University System of Georgia, the BBC, British Airways, the government of Nova Scotia, and just a silly number of other governmental, business, and organizational entities. This newly reported driver's license hack apparently exposed sensitive information like cardholders' addresses, vehicle registration numbers, and social security numbers, though it's unclear what they will do with this data, as there's no indication so far that it's been sold, shared, or released. And the group behind the hacks has publicly said, for what it's worth, that it has erased all stolen government data. From Reuters, Poland to take 2035 fossil fuel car ban to top EU court. The government of Poland has said that it will appeal proposed European Union rules that would end the sale of fossil fuel-powered cars across the EU beginning in 2035. This ban is part of a larger package of sustainability-oriented rules and regulations and is meant to help rein in emissions while also aiding the EU government in expanding its carbon market, which is meant to further incentivize winding down emissions-heavy energy expenditures. The Polish government has consistently pushed back against these policy changes, and that is not a huge surprise, considering that it still produces about 79% of its electricity using fossil fuels. And as of last year, 69% of its power came from coal, the most emitting and polluting type of fuel still commonly used. And from the Associated Press, unionized UPS workers could strike this summer. A whopping 97% of unionized UPS workers voted to authorize a strike beginning as soon as August if the company cannot come to an agreement with the Teamsters before their contract expires in July. This does not mean a strike is imminent, but it does mean the union is playing hardball in negotiating this next contract, which is something we are seeing across many industries right now, which has led to a slew of strikes over the past year or two. UBS employees have not gone on a strike since a quarter century ago when 185,000 workers walked off the job for 15 days, and the company has grown substantially since then, now employing somewhere around 340,000 union workers. Among other complaints they'd like to see remedied, workers want to eliminate a two-tiered system that leaves some employees earning less and netting fewer benefits, while also aiming to address what they consider to be excessive overtime and driver safety issues, including a lack of air conditioning in delivery trucks. If you're finding some value in One Sentence News, consider leaving a quick review wherever you get your podcasts and or sharing the show with a friend. You can find out more about this show or subscribe to the email version at onesentencenews.com. And you can support this and other related projects like the Let's Know Things and Brain Lenses podcasts at understandery.com.